The Daily Gospel Network, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ every day. Join our featured ministry for happiness, healing, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us as we proclaim God's love and help you step into your season. Coming up on the Daily Gospel Network. Welcome church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Well, welcome everyone to the One Touch Ministry broadcast. I am Pastor Shannon and this is your favorite first lady in all the world, Prophetess Naditra Young. <laughs> How you doing on this good, good Friday? <laughs> I was good until you said all of that. <laughs> you was but good. praise God, happy good Friday to each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes today. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so um, on today, you guys, everyone is celebrating Good Friday. So rather you're watching us um after your good friday service your virtual good friday service or tonight you know we're going to be having a good friday service at we first baptist two. church we actually have two we have two yes <laughs> <laughs> we have one in the afternoon yes. and we have one in the evening so i'm pretty excited yes so <laughs> man i'm telling you and i'm just so grateful to god and then uh for april mm -hmm. um this month um, let us know what's happening. Uh oh, what's happening this coming up this month? <laughs> I got a little excited yeah. because our friend and our brother in Christ, Bishop Rice, is going to be coming. He's coming from South Carolina yes. and he's bringing his entire church family. He's bringing his family. So we're truly, truly excited. So make sure you guys tune in. Absolutely. And that's on April the 24th at 7 o'clock. No, at 5 o'clock p.m. I'm getting tonight's service time messed up with. <laughs> I say. <laughs> but at 5 o'clock p.m., make yes. sure you register on Zoom. Go to our website. It's on the screen right now. OneTouchMinistries.net forward slash praise power. So we're coming right back right after this with an awesome word from my wife. Amen. We want to share with you, yeah, and your family, your family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in the streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with oh, one touch ministries. We're here for you right now. God bless everyone. Thank you so much. My name is Prophetess Naditra Young. And listen, I am so super excited because God has a word for you. That's right, God has a word for you today. Listen, I wanna talk to all the leaders. I'm not just talking about kingdom leaders. I'm talking about everyone that wants to lead. If you want to lead, listen, gather around because I'm gonna tell you something. God wants me to share something with you today. And I do believe it's going to bless your life. Tell somebody it's gonna bless my life. It's gonna bless my life. Woo! Listen, I'm excited, all right? Listen, before we get started, I want us to go to the throne of grace because I want God to open our ears so, so that we can hear from Him and open our hearts so that we can receive exactly what He has in store for us. So, Father, we thank you right now. God, we give you praise and we give you glory. God, we thank you for coming in into our lives, God. We ask you to open our ears so that we can hear you, God, and open our hearts so that we can receive everything that you have in store for us. And God, we just thank you for making ways out of no way for us. God, we know that you're going to bless us. We know that you're going to make our opportunities uh, uh, come our way. It's going to be opportunities 
facing us opportunities at our feet, God. We just thank you because today, God, we're going to get clarity on how to lead. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, I am so excited because this is one of the things that I love talking to people about leading. I love talking to leaders about how to be better leaders. I enjoy actually expressing the, 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 the great strategies of leading because leading is not easy. Leading is actually hard. It sounds fantastic. Oh my God, I became a leader by my God from Zion. When I tell you the weight, the mandate that is going to be on top of your life, I want you to be ready for that, okay? Listen, the topic that God has given me to give to you today, it says, yes, you're leading, but are you producing any kind of fruit? That's right. It's okay to lead, and it's great that you want to be a leader, but are you producing any any type of fruit in the process of you leading. It's no need for you to be a leader. It's no need for you to be, be, the, be uh, the big boss and the big CEO if you're not producing any kind of fruit. And if I were used for a subtopic, I don't want nobody to, to tap me on my shoulder and say this to me. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. I do believe your fruit may be bad. <laughs> yes. Because sometimes we can be leading and the fruit that we're producing turns out to be rotten, turns out to be bad. So today we want to learn some principles about leading my God from Zion. Mm -mm -mm. Today I have been seeing so many people who want to lead. They want to lead, but nobody wants to be led. I'm going to say that again to you. I said, I've seen so many people that want to lead, but nobody wants to be led. Today, I need you to humble yourself today and learn how to be led. Led by the Holy Spirit. Be led by, be trained how to lead people properly. Because when you're leading people, you must remember you have souls that are attached to everything that you do. You have souls. You have people following you. So if you have people following you, you want people to receive and you want them to, to produce as well. My God from Zion. Okay, I know some of you are saying, well, 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 can we have some scripture? Yeah, I'm gonna give you some scripture because you know what? Sometimes you need a little bit of scripture to back up what I'm getting ready to introduce to you. My God from Zion. So if you can find Proverbs, the 16th chapter. Now, the first time God gave me Proverbs, the 16th chapter, he said, go to the 18th verse. And then he said, you know what? Read up before you go to the 18th verse. I want you to read up and then come down. I said, okay, God, and I began to read and I began to find that there was more to this story. My God from Zion. So I want you to go to Proverbs, the 16th chapter, and I want you to start with me at verse 17. And we're going to go all the way down to verse 20. My God, and I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible. And the reason why I'm going to be reading from the Message Version, because see, I want you to understand the importance of leading. Mm. I'm going to say that again. I said, I want you to understand the importance of leading. I want you to understand the reason why you're in the hot seat. I want you to understand the reason why you have been chosen to lead the crowd. Okay. All right. Because every business, every movement needs a leader. Woo. Glory to God. Here we go. Proverbs, the 16th chapter in the message uh, version, the message Bible, Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 17. It says, the road of right living bypasses evil. Mm -hmm. Why, my God, watch your step and save your life. I'll say that again. The road, ah, glory to God. The road of right living bypasses evil. Watch your step and save your life. Verse 18, it says, first pride, then the crash. Mm -hmm. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. Boom. Okay. All right. Now I say that again. First pride, then the crash. The bigger the ego, 
the harder the fall. So that means if your ego is real big, trust and believe you fit in the fall. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. All right. And the reason why I'm going to say that you're going to fall is because one thing about leading people, you can't have an ego bigger than your, your, your situation. Mm -hmm. If your ego is so huge, then can't nobody tell you nothing. What's going to happen is you will fall. You will crash. You need to be humble in every situation. Even though you are the leader, you may find that there's people inside of your area, inside of your circle that has a lot of information that can lead you to the promised land. Okay, I'm going to stop. Woo, glory to God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Mm -hmm. All righty. Being a leader... There are so many things that you must learn how to give up. And you say, why would I say that? Because when you're leading people, you can't do what you want to do when you want to do it. It can't be always your way or the highway. It can't be uh, uh, how you feel and that's it. No, you have to learn how to be obedient and learn how to listen to everybody. Because let me tell you something, there's always good information in listening. One thing about being a leader, you must learn how to be a good listener. Be a good listener so you can hear. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you listen to people talk, you're going to hear what they don't say. You're going to hear what they do say. And you're going to hear secret codes in the conversation. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All righty. Here we go. I'm going to give you a point. Point one. When growing into being a leader, you must be willing <laughs> to be in love with knowledge and information. Because, and the reason why I say be in love with knowledge and information, that means you need to go research. You have to be a leader that's willing to do research. You have to be willing to open yourself to read, to write, to study. Always be two to three steps ahead of the situation. Because why? What happens is when you study, what happens is when you read, what happens is when you take the time to research what's going on around you, you have an opportunity to catch a problem before it gets out of hand. Okay, point number two, as a leader, you must be able to admit that you don't know <laughs> everything and you must be willing to learn what it is that you don't know. I'm going to say that again. When you're becoming a leader, you must be able to admit that you don't know everything. And then you must be in the position where you're willing to learn what it is that you don't know. There's a lot of things that we don't know as leaders. So, okay, I know that I'm not an older person, but I am, I, I, I'm in the middle. I'm 40 years old and I'm enjoying my 40s, but I know what it feels to be young, but I'm not a millennial. I'm not a millennial. So what happens is because I'm not a millennial, I have to learn how to listen to millennials so I can learn their language. Because the language that I used to speak, the children don't speak that kind of language today. In the churches, my God from Zion, the churches are getting upset with the millennials. They say, oh, they're too radical. They're wild. They don't have no uh, um, um, home training. Nobody's teaching them. But the reason why the millennials or some of them are a little wild, so we think it's because nobody wants to listen to the millennials. Because we feel as though they don't know anything. In order to get millennials to come to your church and to stay at your church, you have to be willing to listen to them. You have to be able to listen to their issues, listen to what bothers them, listen to what they don't say. 
Ah, come on from Zion. You have to learn how to have the ear to listen. Because one thing I learned about a millennial, a millennial just wants somebody to listen. They don't want nobody to agree with them. They just want somebody to listen. Now we say, why would you say about the millennials? Because I, the reason why I talk about the millennials now is because I remember when I was young. And I remember when I was a teenager, all I really wanted somebody to do was just listen to me. I really didn't want nobody else's opinion. I just wanted you to listen. And because I am 40 now, I had to learn how to shepherd. I had to learn how to disciple millennials. And so what happened was I had to get in connection with a millennial, somebody that could teach me how to understand millennials. Okay, some of your leaders are saying, well, I don't think that's uh, that's necessary. Oh, well, that's why your church ain't growing. That's why you ain't got no millennials in your church. That's why nobody wants to come. That's why you still got them two same faithful members sitting in the pews Sunday after Sunday because you're not willing to be obedient and listen. You're not willing to change. People buck up against things that they don't understand understand don't be one of those leaders you want to produce fruit because like i said if i were used for a topic or a subtopic i don't want nobody to uh tap me on my shoulder and say excuse me ma'am excuse me ma'am i do believe your fruit is bad okay all right number three i'm gonna go down to number three point three uh-huh be willing to develop <laughs> discipline as a leader a lot of times we don't have discipline we don't know how to do things in a routine manner we don't know how to 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 do things at a timely fashion one thing i had to learn is discipline i had to learn how to discipline my spending i had to learn how to discipline my um outgoing and my coming in i had to discipline my time at work i had to put things on a schedule i had to make sure because when you becoming a leader because you begin to become all things to all people you have to learn how to be disciplined because people are looking at you people are depending on you and you want to be a woman and a man of your word if you say you're going to be somewhere at five o'clock you want to actually be there at five o'clock because why they are looking for you to do what you say you're doing you're going to do let me tell you something about the youth today the youth today don't go off of action they go off of what you say they go off of what you say if you say you're going to pay them then you gotta pay them i'm talking to my leaders today because I don't want nobody tapping you on the shoulder and saying, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. I do believe that your fruit may be bad. The reason why we can't keep people in the sanctuary because we're not men and women of our word, ladies and gentlemen. I got to touch on the kingdom right now. By God from Zion. The reason why things are not going the way it should be going in the ministry because you're not a man and a woman of your word. God asks you to do certain things and God asks you to uh, to fast. And you say, oh, I'm going to fast next week. And then next week coming, you don't, never, you don't never do it. And then the week after that comes and you still don't never do it. God is calling for you to become more disciplined in your leadership. You want to lead people, but you don't want to be disciplined. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. It reminds me of David. Oh, God, my God, Jesus. David was a disciplined type of person. Even though people puffed his head up, even though they made songs about him, David was a servant. He was a man after God's own heart. <laughs> he was obedient. <laughs> My God. Even with him being a, 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 basically a leader in training, he never overrided his real leader. My God from Zion. Even when he had the air of opportunity to take him out, huh, he said, I I'm still going to cover my leader because at the end of the day, who am I to take somebody out? My God from Zion. And so if you're a leader in training, I'm telling you today, 
learn how to cover your leader. Even when the leader may not do what you want them to do. Even when the leader may not say what you want him to say. Learn how to still cover your leader in the midnight hour. Because why? You don't want nobody to tap you on your shoulder and say, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. I do believe that your fruit may be bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now, I, 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 I I just got to talk about David one more time. David, my God from Zion, he was willing not to be seen. Whew. So many leaders today want to be seen and they want to be famous and they want to be heard. I'm here to tell you one thing about a good leader. A good leader don't know has a don't have a problem standing in the background. A good leader doesn't have a problem being the one that's quiet. A good leader doesn't have a problem pushing his people, her people. One thing about a good leader, they don't worry about being seen. They don't worry about being famous. Because why? The word of God was talking about the ego. The ego, the bigger the ego, the harder the fall. You don't want to be one of those leaders that has a huge ego and fall down to the ground. You don't want to be like Humpty Dumpty that sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men could not Put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Woo, glory to God. You don't want to be a Humpty Dumpty sitting on the wall. Okay, my God from Zion. 19, verse 19, Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 19. It says, it's better to live humbly among the poor than to live, uh, oh my God, to live it up uh, among the rich and the famous. Sometimes it's good to keep your mouth closed, uh, that even though you have the riches, but it's good to seal them lips. Because when you seal your lips, uh, my God from Zion, honey, you just put your in a humble position and some people come to you and say well I didn't even know you had it like that well because there's no need to brag about it because but for the grace of God there go I because it could be you it could be me but God is so good and merciful and kind to us okay I'm gonna leave that alone my God from Zion oh glory to God it's getting hot up in here hot up in here my God mm 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 if you want God to use you, stop worrying about being seen. If you want God to use you today, stop worrying about being seen. Because I'm telling you, worrying about being seen and worrying about being heard and worrying about who has the latest flyer on Facebook or Instagram, I'm going to tell you something. And being all mysterious is unnecessary. People see you. People hear you. They already know what you're doing. Be grateful. Just be grateful. I was sitting here earlier with my husband. We were doing praise and worship before we started taping. And I began to tell God how grateful I was. Because I remember a time when I didn't have. I remember the time when I couldn't supply the need for my family. I remember the time when I couldn't put food on my table. I remember the time when I was uh, uh, sleeping in my car because I was afraid the repossession man was going to come and take my car. Oh, glory to God. Here, I'm Baba -ba -ba I, I remember the time that I stood at the window, uh, just watching the window all night long, watching my car because I was afraid that the repossession man was going to come by. He was going to he bought my car, my God from Zion. But I praise God today. I give God all the glory and I give God all the honor. Because why? Because God made a way for me out of no way. He picked me up. He dusted me off. He turned me around, placed my feet on the solid ground. And I am so grateful today because of his kindness. So I'm going to leave you with this. My God, my God. It pays. Verse 20. It pays to take life seriously. Things work out when you trust God. Leaders, I'm talking to all the leaders all over the world. When you trust God, God will work it out for you. You don't have to try to make things happen. You don't have to try to take matters into your own hands to try to make your church grow. If you just trust God, God will make your church grow. If you trust God, God will make your business grow. Money will come to you, but there's a way that you got to act. You got to put the best foot forward. You got to give God something to work with. Change your heart. Change your attitude. 
Change the words that come out of your mouth. Treat your employees with love and respect. Honor them when it's needed. Show them that you appreciate them. Leaders in the church, make sure you tell your members that you appreciate them. Let them know how important they are. Because the people of God need this. Today, we are in a position where we all need encouragement. We need somebody to tap us on the shoulder and not to tell us that our fruit is being bad, but that we are producing and we're doing well. People need encouragement today, ladies and gentlemen, and I need you to be the one to give it to them. Leaders, let's be better. Let's be better today. Let's lead the people of God properly today. If you need to say you're sorry to someone, take this time right now to call a friend and let them know how sorry you are. You say, well, I didn't do anything. A lot of times we don't do anything, but in a lot of times we do. And we're not aware of it. So what you need to do is just pick up the phone and say, I'm sorry, I didn't lead you properly. I, I, could you give me another opportunity to lead you? I'm talking to the pastors. I'm talking to the apostles. I'm talking to the grand apostles and the chief apostles. And I'm talking to the bishops. I'm talking to the evangelists, the elders, the deacons of the church, trustees. You should call the member and say, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, sir. I just want to say I'm sorry. I want to say I'm sorry because I may have said or done something that wasn't pleasing to the eyesight of the Lord. And I don't want to lose my life and be held accountable for not picking up the phone when I could have to say that I'm sorry. Don't worry about who did what, who said what. Just make sure you clean your slate. Because once again, ha. Huh, First pride, then the crash. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. God loves you today, and he loves your neighbor. Make sure you call someone today. Reach out to them. Reach out to them and tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much you're praying for them. Pray for them right there on the phone. Let them know that somebody cares. Because as leaders, there's times we have to apologize. There's times that we have to take out time with people and we have to let them know they're producing and they're gonna produce good fruit. So Father, we just thank you right now for each and every person. Father, if there's anyone among us that doesn't know you, allow them to see this broadcast, Father, and allow them to accept you into their lives. And you're probably saying, how do I do that? All you got to do is repeat after me. Father, I am a sinner. Forgive me, for I have sinned. Write my name in the book of life. And Father, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Right then and right there, you have been introduced to Jesus Christ. Find yourself a Bible-believing church. And if you want to contact One Touch Ministries, listen, you have the air of opportunity. I love you so much and I thank you for doing, joining us today. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you get in contact with us. Let us know that you want to hear a little bit more about Jesus and what he can do for you. Remember that Jesus loves you and so do I. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, and until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.